Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on regulation during English press. This lecture is part of your paper on news and society. This paper focuses on highlighting the key regulatory tactics which the colonial government imposed in order to ensure its hegemonic control over the Indian press. The paper highlights the factors responsible for the emergence of such regulatory policies as well as the kind of press scenario they created with the changes made within the rules and regulations governing the functioning of the press in India. <music> Lastly, the paper highlights the contradictory scenarios between the English and the vernacular press in India. The students will have a clarity over the changes within the regulatory policies governing by functioning of press during colonial India. The student will also be familiarized about the conditions which made imposition of such laws mandatory and the kind of impact it had on the Indian society during the colonial rule. Regulation during English press. India did not witness any newspaper before 1780. The British in India therefore relied on imported newspapers from England which took almost a period of nine months or a year to arrive in India. The earliest attempt to start a newspaper in India was done by ex-servants of the company who were disgruntled by the British regime and wanted to expose the evils and malpractices of the colonial government through those respective newspapers. The circulation figures of these newspapers was limited. It never exceeded beyond 200 which in turn failed to generate the desirable public opinion within the society. Even the reach of these newspapers to the neighboring territories was highly limited. The press marked its beginning in India in late 18th century and in no time it started expanding which created an urgent need to regulate the untamed growth. Traces of press in India can be found prior to British rule in India that is during Mughal era. News writers were appointed in various administrative units to disseminate news from different parts of the province. Disseminate news from different parts of the province to the headquarters. East India Company also continued this practice and set up printing press in Bombay in 1674. However, the first newspaper in India came in 1780, despite the printing press being established a century before. Hickey's two-sheet newspaper contained defamatory attacks on company's officials. Due to absence of established press regulations, Hickey was sued only for libel and Bengal Gazette was deprived of general postal privileges. Hickey's Gazette specialized in exposing the private lives of company officials including the Governor General Warren Hastings and his wife and Colonel Thomas Dean Pierce. Salmon Ross, John Zakarik, Kirinder. He had no intention to attain literary attainment and his paper was highly devoted to scandalous attacks on company servants. Because of his writings, Hickey soon landed in trouble. Content of the Hickey's Gazette became predicament for those who was attacked by Hickey in his two-sheet gazette. After Bengal Gazette 
many other similar newspapers came into existence but even till the end of the 18th century there were no formal laws associated with the press newspaper was started with official references and in case of displeasuring government the postal privileges were revoked which resulted in the discontinuation of paper hickey courageously practiced journalism till he was reduced to poverty and distress by the beginning of 19th century the demand for press regulation was felt as it was difficult to control a large number of newspapers and the libellous content which they produced against the government marquis of wellesley came forth with a rigid war time regulations in press wellesley's regulation was amended many times by his successors to suit various interest groups for whom the government interest was prioritized earlier there were two major interest groups involved in press that is the government and the anglo indian newspapers which rarely attempted actions which were anti regime the rise of indian language newspapers gave way to new set of regulations as their owners were natives of india and this troubled the government and this troubled the government officials in terms of the content that they would publish they feared it would be rebellious and anti british they feared it would be rebellious and anti british for instance the revolt of 1857 shook the administration of east india company two indians were defeated lord kennings blamed the press and circulation of opinions among the native indians through seditious writing in newspaper as a cause for such uprising the 1857 revolt not only marked the regime change from east india company's control to british crown but it also shaped press regulations according to different interest groups government's attitude also changed towards the indian newspaper and more difficult and rigid laws began to be framed to be framed which continued up till the 20th century the colonial government well understood the power of press and started taking precautionary measures to avoid any kind of publication of anti government movement getting circulated through the press any form of anti colonial writings in the name of news made the regime to impose strict regulatory laws to contain the unbridled freedom enjoyed by the press so far william bolt was made to resign from the company's service after censure by court of directors for private trade under the company's authority bolt made it known that he had in many things to communicate which mostly intimately concerned every individual this created resentment amongst the company officials and bolt was ordered to go back to europe messink and reed started indian gazette in 1780 they obtained consent for starting publication and postal concession from governor general with the assurance that they would abide by any kind of regulations the governor general or the current regime would lay down regarding the functioning of the press they obtained consent by which they were appointed as printers to the company at calcutta in 1784 calcutta gazette was published under direct patronage of the government in the following years many publications were started bengal journal and a monthly the oriental magazine of calcutta amusement in 1785 the calcutta chronicle in 1786 the new editors were cautious after hickey's example and were 
loyal to the company's regulations. Meanwhile, first newspaper in Madras, the Madras Courier, came into being in 1785 as an officially recognized newspaper founded by Richard Johnson, the government printer. By an order, it was stated that advertisement could not be published in the newspapers without the official signature either by secretaries of government or any other officer duly authorized. The first exchange took place between uh, Calcutta and Bombay only in 1786 when James Hatley, secretary in Bombay, wrote to Secretary Brewer in Calcutta saying that the president in council wanted the governor general to order printers of Bengal Gazette to send a copy of the newspapers regularly. The problem was that these newspapers posed a risk of reaching London rather than they creating any form of effect in Bengal. This in turn would blot the image of the company, officials operating in Bengal. James Mill described the position of the press before the arrival of Marquis of Wellesley. In the early portion of its career, the Indian press had been left to follow its courses with no longer check than which the law of label imposed. The character of the papers of early days sufficiently shows that indulgence was abused and that while they were useless as vehicles of information of any value, they were filed with indecorous attacks upon the private life and ignorant central issues of public measures. History of British India, Volume 3, 1856, page 58. In addition to that, the regulatory method of press censorship was introduced in 1795 when R. Williams, who started Madras Gazette, was ordered to produce general orders of the government before uh, military secretary, before publication. The common tactic used by the colonial government to keep the newspaper agencies in line was to cripple them financially by removing all sorts of state funded provision so as to make sure they are unable to sustain their circulations in the long run. As a result, the newspaper which were either neutral or pro-British, they were made to expand whereas the others, they gradually faced severe financial situations in India. Overview of press, regulations during British regime in India. The Wellesley regulation was introduced in 1799. Marquis of Wellesley was expecting a war with Tipu Sultan of Mysore and rival French power in India. So he wanted to regulate the press and the Europeans in Calcutta by imposing strict regulations. He also wanted to keep a check on information leak through the press and getting received by the enemy as the editor of Asiatic Mirror. Published the estimates of European and Indian population in the newspaper. As a result, Wellesley laid down rules for conduct of the whole tribe of editors and suppress them and send them back to Europe. Press regulation was imposed on May 1799 which involved newspapers to carry in imprint the name of the printer. The editor and the proprietor to declare themselves to the secretary to the government and to submit all material published in the newspaper for prior scrutiny. The secretary was vested the power of censor. He was required to exclude 
from the newspapers the information in regard to the movement of ships or the embarkation of troops stores or species or any information which would be used by the enemies the court of directors approved the rules censorship which was earlier introduced in madras in 1795 was introduced in bengal after 1799 regulations free censorship was also introduced this was done to keep a check on the unclaimed newspapers however wellesley's fear seemed baseless as the arrival of european newspapers took more than 9 months by that time most of the information which was considered as news would become stale and unimportant on april 9th 1807 the governor in council banned public meetings the extreme restriction on press led to the growth of an underground radical press pamphlets were published which kept the identity of the author and the printer confidential this action superimposed the inception of amendments within the regulations which require all the presses to publish name of the printer on all the literature being printed after wellesley lord cornwallis was given the charge followed by lord barlow and then by lord minto the regulation on the press remained the same during that time however when hastings took over as the governor general of bengal from minto in 1813 he introduced his own set of regulations he issued instructions which uh, required all printing presses to submit proof sheets of the newspapers supplements extra publications notices handbills and other ephemeral publications to the chief secretary for scrutiny and revision The liberal policies of Hastings were both appreciated and criticized. Hastings was aware of the fact that the court of directors would not approve total withdrawal of all the restrictions. Adam including court of directors Mount Stuart, Elphinstone, governor of Bombay and governor of Madras considered freedom of press as a threat to the company's rule in india hastings on the other hand believed that a responsible attitude of the public opinion would foster a sense of responsibility in press this however was rejected by many in 1823 the adams press ordinance came into being after acquiring the position as the governor general in 1823 adam immediately sanctioned the ordinance duly approved by court of directors on december 18 1823 the ordinance required that all the matters printed in the press or published thereafter except the commercial matters shipping intelligence advertisement of sales current prices of commodities rates of exchange should be published under the license from governor general in council signed by the chief secretary designation which was abolished by hastings when he revoked the pre censorship law of the government the application for the license must have the name of the printer and the publisher and the proprietor their place of residence location of the press and the title of the newspaper magazine pamphlet etc a penalty of rupees 400 would be charged for printing without license 
the penalty of infringement for fine was of rupees 1000 or 6 months imprisonment this act also laid special procedures for applying for the license in which copy of publication has to be presented before the magistrate for the approval of the application licensing proved to be an indirect way of controlling the content of the newspaper or protecting other laws associated with the prevention of seditious writing this was visible in the case of Raja Ram Mohan Roy's newspaper in which his license to run a newspaper Mirat ul Akbar was revoked when he cited few paragraphs from other newspapers in his own this action was against the press laws as argued by the state but the primary reason was to control the spreading of content as much as possible the Metcalf Act of 1835 was a pivotal regulatory measure Metcalf was known as the liberator of press in India he was a member of the council of governor general Lord Bentinck he became the governor general of India in 1835 Metcalf wanted reconsideration of the licensing of the press he wanted to refrain the entire press laws in India he therefore formed a press commission he invited Macaulay the legislative member of the Supreme Council to draft press act and to incorporate all the suggestions of the press commission he favored that the license act should be repealed and was in support for liberal press laws despite knowing that the court of directors preferred to impose rigid restrictions on the press he wanted to encourage native press in India after all the debates and discussions governor general with the unanimous support of his council passed Metcalf Act of 1835 and employed it and implied it all over the presidencies and rule of East India Company in India M. Chalpati Rao stated that Metcalf act in his book the press the act called for the repeal of all the regulation in other presidencies as well including Bengal press regulations of 1823 and Bombay press regulations of 1825 and 1827 The new act was applicable in the operation to the territories of the East India Company. It provided for a declaration by the printer and publisher of any newspaper on periodical giving a true and precise account of the premises of publication. In the event of a change in the place of printing, or publication or the printer or publisher leaving the territories of the East India Company a fresh declaration would be necessary the penalty for non declaration was a fine not exceeding rupees 5000 and imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years it was open to a printer or publisher to cease to function as such by a similar declaration to that effect it was required that every book or paper printed in a press after due declaration should bear the name of the printer or publisher and the place of publication the penalty was the same as the penalty for non-declaration. Metcalf's a liberation policy with the consent of the court of directors revoked the prohibition against the connection of company servant with the press but court of director warned that the government should have certain emergency powers so as to restrict the misuse of the press. Canning, after his speech in June 1857, introduced rigid press laws. He was backed by Lord 
एल्फिनस्टोन गवर्नर जनरल ऑफ बॉम्बे द कैनिंग प्रेस एक्ट री इंट्रोड्यूस द एडम लाइसेंसिंग रेगुलेशन ऑफ एटीन ट्वेंटी थ्री बट टू होल ऑफ इंडिया नो डिस्टिंगशन वॉज मेड बिटवीन इंडियन प्रेस एंड द इंग्लिश प्रेस द लाइसेंस हैड टू बी रिन्यूड एवरी ईयर विद द सेम सेट ऑफ प्रोसीजर्स Lord Canning set up an editor's room where uh, some papers were inspected for surveillance of information and the type of content that newspapers published on a random basis. From 1908 to 1947, uh, there were more than 10 acts which were passed to control the press during the mentioned period. These were. Newspaper Act 1908 the Great Indian Press the Indian Press Act 1910 the Government of India Act 1919 the Indian Press Ordinance 1930 Indian Press Act 1931 Foreign Relation Act 1932 Indian State Act 1932 Indian States Act 1934 and again in 1943 the defame of India Act and rules in 1939 the criminal procedure code section 99A to 99A added by the amendment act 1922 in december 193 the colonial government sought to amend the indian official secret act of 1889 with the object of placing civil matters on a level with the naval and military the anglo indian press was at one with the indian press and in its opposition to this measure but the cleavage between the two sections of the press became more marked than ever before during the swadeshi movement of 1905 to 1908 the partition of bengal agitated the Indian public motivated by press to curb its proliferation imperial state brought the newspapers act 1908 under this act if any newspaper found inciting the offenses like crime of murder or any act of violence this act would put an end to the existence of the very newspaper the district magistrate was empowered to confiscate the printing press where the newspaper containing incitement to violence was printed he could also make the orders absolute after a show cause notice even the police was empowered to attack the printing press and issue warrants before the order was made absolute the government was also authorized to cancel the declaration of the printer or publisher of the newspaper a similar provision existed in the vernacular press act of 1878 as well as the indian press emergency powers act of 1931 which is still in force today the colonial government enacted the indian press act of 1910 this act was imposed on the press to prevent it from writing seditious writings against the government under this act the magistrate was empowered to demand a deposit of not not less than rupees 500 and not more than rupees 2000 from the keepers of news printing presses and publishers of newspapers the magistrate was also empowered to dispense with the deposit of any security or cancel or vary any order already issued if the newspaper entertained any form of anti state elements in its stories this act also defined objectionable whose publication was to entitle the government to forfeit the security to his majesty even the scope of definition of seditious publication was enlarged to include writings against the indian princes judges executive officers and public servants another arbitrary feature of this act was the provincial government was given power to decide what was an offending publication 
and what was an objectionable matter. In 1931, while constitutional discussions and roundtable conferences were taking place in London, the colonial government decided to deal with the situation in Bengal by introducing a new press bill which later on was identified as the Indian Press Emergency Power Act of 1931. This act stated that the government would be given the power to extend the period of the act by an additional year after its own year time frame. Under the scheme of this act, section 4 defined certain classes of objectionable matter. Section 3 and 7 empowered the government to require the keeper of a press and the publisher of a newspaper respectively to deposit security up to rupees 1000 which may be increased to rupees 5000 if any previous keeper or publisher is required to deposit the security further section 4 and 8 empowered the government to declare the security forfeited in specific cases like anti-government movement etc section 16 and 17 conferred the power to seize and destroy unauthorized news sheets and newspapers and to seize and forfeit undeclared presses producing such news sheets etc section 19 contained provision enabling the government to declare certain publications forfeited and to issue search warrants for the same. Section 21 prohibited the transmission of unauthorized news sheets by post. In 1932, the Foreign Relations Act was introduced which aimed at providing stringent actions against the press if it aimed at publishing statements which would affect the friendly relations between His Majesty, government and the government of certain foreign states. In 1934, the Indian States Act was passed to protect the administration of states in India, which were under the authority of His Majesty from activities which tended to subvert or excite disaffection towards or to obstruct such administration. On 13 September 1946, the powers for controlling the press by the defense of Indian rules came to an end. It became necessary for the central government and for the provincial government to take special power to deal with the communal situation and with writing in the press which tended to promote feeling of hatred between uh, different communities. However, democracy placed on the press the responsibility of continual vigilance in order to see that the government functioned in the interest of the people and in accordance with their wishes. The press did not have any special rights or privileges. The establishment of democracy imposed on the press the added duty of using its powers for the welfare of all and not for the benefit of any section of society. As a result, the regulations over the press led to a channelized form of growth rather than a process of diverse expansion of press where both the newspaper agencies and the state clashed with each other. Thank you.